This session, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called The Future of User-Created Immersive Art Worlds. Our speakers today are Reiner Schneeberger and Juliette Sorel Dreaming. Reiner writes under the name Art Blue in Res Magazine, mostly about the future of digital life. And Juliet is the owner of Surreal Art Gallery in Second Life and The Open Sim, and is co-curator of One Biennale. Welcome all. Let's begin the session. Thank you much for the friendly introduction. I have prepared for today, together with Juliette, a 15 minute presentation about the future. But future, we know, can be everything when not given a time horizon. Instead of giving it now before we start, I want to say what cornerstones I put in for the presentation of today. Might be even better to say impacts than cornerstones. One is that at the University of Manchester, a computer was recently developed that works similar to the human brain, means based on randomness. They call it spikes, human brain spikes. That's one corner store. My interest in understanding as a human brain. I worked with medical eye track. Uh, I worked with medical eye uh, trackers in the late 70s with Hans Daucher and Herbert de Franke, both professors for art in Munich, to find out what is a good artwork for the mind. In other words, what makes an artwork, especially a uh, digital artwork, seen as interesting and beautiful. Is it different for men and women? Has it to do with presettings and the experience in art? Questions might come up, or they came up, long before terms like pattern recognition or cybernetic aesthetics came onto the scene. Random art was also the first type of artwork I worked um, at school on a Wang 600 computer, which we might see today more as a programmable typewriter. I had to draw the coordinates, the computer calculated with a pen and a ruler on paper. Before some years later at the university computing center, there was a plotter available. When I see all the impacts along my way of computing for over 45 years, and many years of them have been in industrial supercomputing, then I begin to dream. So dreaming is another impact that you will notice in the presentation. Currently, I write on a novel, B. Blue Travels to Earth to Save the Art on Mars. You smell alone by hearing this title and the name of the protagonist, B. Blue, that you shall not take it too serious what I will now present as the future of immersive art. Nevertheless, you are all invited to take part in the proposal or to make a proposal that will also be aired by the voice of Juliette, who acts as a co-curator for the next Biennale to come. As a side note, I want to invite you to join the HyperKit Hoppers. My copy avatars are blue from Metropolis Grid and from OS Grid are sitting in the audience at Keynote Area 2, where you can easily join by clicking the groups in World. We travel once a month with, uh, in the grid to primary places of art, historic and magic. I hope that many of the former HD Safari attendants will join. Marcus, you may start now the recording. Thank you much. Then I want to head to the future. Welcome to the future of user-created immersive art worlds. I announced at the proceedings to start with the past and the present by showing a machinima running for 12 minutes. Then I wanted then to, I head want to, to head to the future. I did this at a time where I had not set up my speech completely. Now I'm not sure if I would make the future of immersive art and life in the remaining time. 30 minutes is not much, you know, for the future when you are blue. And being art does not help much then, the blue element always takes over. Luckily, the solution is quite simple. First, I will play the machinima at the end, and second, I give you some homework. For the homework, you are lucky. Christmas is ahead. You just need to unwrap the gift I hand you over. 
It is a web link to a booklet I finished a few days ago about one Biennale, an art project in Open Simulator, which I had the pleasure to announce exactly one year ago at the OSCC 17. This booklet has also a PDF version, which looks not so bad. Of course, you can't compare it to the printed book, which has a beautiful cover and a dust sleeve. I post the link in chat. The free download for the PDF will expire after the Congress. So long for all the fish. That's the past. Thank you, Joyce, for the support, the Abacon team, Malburns, Markus, Maria Korolov, and the conference team to help make the first digital Biennale to a success. Now let me start with an announcement of a living door, the next Biennale spoken by Giuliette. The Biennale will happen in 2020. It will have a grand opening in Leipzig and in Munich, Germany, and in Santorini, Greece. I have to thank Juliette Suraldi for her ongoing support. Juliette, please. Avatars, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Over generations, our future was in the hands of humans. Now we leave the past behind. Today, let us look beyond the center and celebrate a living door. Personality capture and emulation, that is the future. Welcome the first recoded human. Cyber X-Strike has entered the building. Cyber Extract, in real, Christiana Ray Schneider, a 19-year-old girl, being for two years an art student in Art Blues Lab, has completed the Bainbridge procedure. It took her over one year to answer the 15,000 items. Professor Sim Bainbridge, Program Director at the National Science Foundation, Washington, D.C., had set up. Cyber Extract, will act indistinctable from the human counterpart. There is a short story in Art Blue's book titled Not Sand, Not Sound, where the grand-grandkids of Christiana speak with Cyber X Strike about the time when she created her immortal Bainbridge profile to be a timeless artist and, and a gamer. She was with 16 years a counter-strike professional born in Las Vegas before she moved to Germany. Welcome, Cyber Extract. I hand the microphone back to Art Blue. Thank you, Juliette, and also welcome, Cyber Extract. Art handshakes with gaming. Gaming is a billion business that will have big impacts in the arts. Let us think for a moment what this will mean for identity creation. Let's have a look at the slides I created for today. Feel free to post your questions in chat. Juliette will collect them. You will get a feedback at the end of my presentation or later via private IM. Is the future of immersive interactive art that an art experience can happen between the old avatars as we know it now when I look around into the audience, each avatar steered by a human counterpart, via a keyboard, 
And then the new avatars being solely artificial coded ones? I will copy this question in chat. For the not native English attendance, it might be not so easy to catch that I speak of the now and the future of digital bots and digital minds. I don't know the answer. Time will tell. But it is an interesting concept I presented some years ago in Rome at the live performers meeting as a vision for VJs, for virtual jockeys as they call themselves. A VJ is a performer in event domes, the modern DJ where light and magic follow the tunes. By saying that my avatar will in the future play the code, the program as a live show, I had in mind the limelight in New York, where I have been about 40 years ago. It was a big club in a former Episcopal Church of the Holy Communion, an impressive Gothic building in the center of the city. I liked the idea when particle shows I programmed as Art Blue or as VJ Quantum could be sent after my death to the limelight. But the reality will happen earlier and focus on bigger places like the fabric in London, the Green Valley in Brazil, the Octagon in South Korea, the Paja Ibiza and the Amnesia in Spain. They have the money and the hunger for innovation to let the best teams of VJs act. They will use artificial intelligence systems to recognize the reception of the sound and visual effects to let the big event temples burst. They don't need me. I would need to trick them and say that I am 17 years old. Art Blue makes it now to 11 years, so yeah, in six years my big time might come. Think back when you started with an avatar, your red stay, your anniversary, the anniversary of your friends. Some of them left big traces in the arts. Some become immortal or will become immortal by their work. The greatest stamp on each prim is leaving an imprint in the digital Anthropocene. We all, who have an avatar, a smartphone, a Facebook entry, feel that our world and private life will become more and more digital and that it will be going fast. Why is it so? The singularity that is discussed widely will happen in medicine. Big data, AI, gene sequencing, robotics overlap to a personal medicine. Individual treatment to lengthen the human lifespan To crisp our biological code is the driving force for investments, a driving force for the digitalization of our society. How can this giant leap blend into an art competition to an art show in open simulator? Thanks to the human mind, when the mind is willing to see art in bricks, to immerse in simple things, to enjoy self-made pieces to become a child again. Then the door is open. An avatar can be coded and act as a living door, as a living artist in a digital world. That is easy to believe if you check the stats. Here comes the question. What is the most popular game? The number one. It is a game where you more or less until now can create worlds by just using bricks. Juliette will read from GameDesigning.org. GamesDesigning.org says, Companies are building office buildings inside of Minecraft on private servers, and they actually use the building to meet with clients and discuss business. That doesn't happen inside of you if you're an unpopular game. Minecraft exploded onto the scene and has continued to snowball ever since. It's everywhere. Adults are playing it, tiny baby kids are playing it, and will get in there and carve out the occasional secret hobbit hole. It's so charming and fun, and it's comfortable in any social setting or social circle. Yeah, Minecraft is the king of the school this time around. 
Open Simulator can do more than Minecraft, a hundred times more. It can do less than Unity, sure, but Unity? Does it have avatars, the one we know, the ones we may become when we open the doors? As I said at the beginning, I presented one year ago at this place, at OSCC 17, a call to create pavilions and artist cubes, so to contribute to the first digital biennale. The name of the art show, One Biennale. Enjoy during the coffee break to watch the machinima touching reality that shows the result in a 12 minute long video made by the Italian videographer wizard Oskrom. Feel free to come to our booth where you get the details for the next Biennale in 2020, A Living Door. Giuliette will now read and share some information about the 2020 Biennale from the note cards provided. I share with you now some information regarding the One Biennale 2020, A Living Door. Here is the vision for it. Mission and Tips Each avatar decides in their life, on their path, the door to walk after their path comes close to an end. Each artist offers an entrance, a door from the digital world. What door will be entered? A door where Buddha is waiting? A door where an artificial intelligence in form of a blue cube is? When the avatar enters after a lifespan, the doors of choice, then a step is ahead to enter Santorini. What will be behind? What comes after the avatar life? Is there a book of wisdom? A challenge? A place of rest? A way to move, to teleport to the other life that might be in the sky? Facing real life as the door of Santorini might implicate? Create a vision that triggers people to enter your door and please don't disappoint them when they have entered and long for the other level, the level they have heard of but never seen. Of course, you can disappoint them on purpose. It is all about creativity, isn't it? Thank you. Please post questions and comments in chat. Thank you for your attention. 